29-year-old Doc Waller is on a mission. For nearly three years, this Air Force veteran has been leading an effort to make art more accessible in the small college town of Auburn, Alabama. The Lehman Group's literal mission is to champion the emergence of the arts and creativity as essential ingredients of life. And I always like to say that the, the most important word in that mission is essential. We don't want people to look at the arts as a hobby. We don't want people to look at the arts as something that they can approach um, uh, sporadically. We want, them to, we want them to look at the arts as something that they need to invest in, to indulge in every single day because they believe that it adds to their life. It, they believe that it, that it makes them live life better. They believe that it makes them a better human being because we as artists, already believe that. We don't, we don't need convincing of that, so we're just trying to illuminate the, the benefits and the possibilities of and within the arts so people can kind of realize, you know, we need to pay more attention to this. This is essential, just as coffee and pancakes. Having worked in acting and in dance for companies in New York and Atlanta, Doc has taken on a new role as the executive director of the Lehman Group a nonprofit arts organization. And I was leaving rehearsal one day and I was walking down Broadway back to the subway to, to go back to New Jersey and it hit me, man, I'm happy. I'm doing exactly what I told myself I was gonna do five or six years ago. Uh, I'm being paid for to be an actor. Um, I'm, 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 I'm paying my rent through acting. Uh, I get to do exactly what I wanna do, but at that very same time, I got really depressed and I got really upset because I had to be in New York. I had no other choice. There was no other opportunity for me to be that paid living performer. The man who gets up at 5 a.m. and works daily until 11 at night says the idea to start the Lehman Group came to him while working as an actor in New York City. How many other people are doing exactly what I did and aren't going to have the opportunities that I have because they can't get to New York. You know, um, or, 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 you know, how, why did I have to come here? How come it just wasn't a choice? I, felt like, I feel like there are a lot of people within the state of Alabama who want these more expansive, more professional, more rewarding artistic careers, and they can't have them because these, because these opportunities aren't being nurtured. So I told myself, all right, even though I'm having a heck load of fun right now, I'm going to go back down south before I get too old, while I still have some energy, and start this. I'm going to start this organization. I'm going to make it happen. And it didn't happen right away. You know, I, I stumbled once or twice with getting it off the ground, and I even had to go back into the arts. Uh, I went back to Atlanta and started performing full time again, so I can just kind of get my mind back into that starving artist mode to let me know where, where I need to at least come from. Um, so that's what it was. It was just really wanting to do what I can to make more professional opportunities for people like myself and make sure that the reason why they have to leave is no longer because of the way people see an artist. When I came back from New York, people would say, hey, hey, what do you do? And I'd say, I'm, I'm an actor. And they're like, well, what did I see you in? And I'm like, nothing. <laughs> when was the last time you were in New York? Or they'll say, oh, you need some money? I'm like, no, I'm, 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 I'm you know, you know, so it's just like there, there, are, there are false, um, stereotypes about a professional artist. It, it just seems uh, not everywhere, not, not throughout the state of Alabama, but too much of. Um, it, it's not the same thing when someone says, I'm a cop, I'm a policeman, I'm a lawyer, I'm a doctor. We need, when people say I'm a writer, it needs to mean something different than what it does now. When people say I'm a, when a, when a man says I'm a contemporary dancer, it needs to mean something different here than it means right now. Society perpetuates the fact that you want to get this golden ticket. It's this big Willy Wonka-esque golden nugget. I've got my money set away. I'm free. I can live. Honestly, for the last 10 years of my life, if I've got $1.75 for coffee and peanut butter and jelly, <laughs> I'm rolling. Because I can take that coffee and go to the library and, and read some Shakespeare or do something. Because that's all, that's in, in, in the grand scheme of things, that's all I want. I, all I want is the opportunity to pay my rent and work. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people, that's not, what, uh, that's not what most people want. Most people want that golden nugget. And there are a lot of people within the arts that just want the opportunity to work. <laughs> How many hours do I not put into the Lehman <laughs> Group? Every single second, every single second of the day. 
is devoted to the Lang Langman Group. There were times when I wake up in the middle of the night and open up my laptop because I feel like I am not working as hard as I need to because one day I want to be able to walk into this office and see four or five other people who are being paid and who get to wake up and walk into the Lehman Group office at 8 o'clock in the morning and sit around this desk and figure out how we can get more money for artists and more opportunities for artists. That, that, that makes me put every single, there's not one second that I'm not working, not one. People who love the art and have indulged in the art for a long time, they have satellite heads because they, get to, they, 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 they walk the street and they, and they just watch everything because the way they look at it. My mom always says, this is a running joke in my family, when I ride in the car, this is how I ride in the car. Because I'm always looking at like how everything, the shapes and the design and how I can stage something. I'm always choreo I can't listen to music without choreographing. As of now, at this point, yeah, I'm very addicted to art. And, and the reason why I'm addicted to art is because I, I think I see it differently. I'm addicted, I'm addicted to art because of the, 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 what I got from the girl, the artist, um, Julie Baker, coming in here the other day. I'm addicted to it because of what it tells me about people. I'm addicted to it because of the conversations I have about it. I'm not addicted to a painting. I'm not addicted to a play production. I'm addicted to the stories and the conversations and uh, that's what I'm addicted to. I'm addicted to I'm addicted to what it tells me uh, about people. I'm addicted to what art tells me about myself. I'm 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 self indulging enough to love art because of what it tells me about myself. You know, I am addicted. So you, you consider yourself an art addict? I am an art addict. Yes, definitely. Mm -hmm. So you feel like it consumes your life? Um, it, just art. Art doesn't. No, it doesn't cons. It doesn't consume my life, it allows me to consume life.